Okay, so it's get, I'm getting ready to cut this dovetail and uh, just got some of the things that I, uh, I need prepared for, you know, for the job. Um, I've got the, uh, I've got the body clamped in here securely, okay, and because um, I'm going to be marking this out, I'm going to be sawing it. And then I'm going to be chiseling, okay? Uh, now I have a template here that I that I made from acrylic, okay? This is this is the this is the template that you use to mark out the boundaries of uh, of the cut. So it's a, it's a self tightening joint. It's wedge shaped, going this way, or it's actually on the guitar. It's wedge shaped, going this way. And it's wedge shaped going this way. And also the inside face has got a wedge shape to it. So when the um, when the neck goes in, it tightens itself. Now, we're going to cut this roughly first, of course. And then we're going to, def we're going to refine the joint by, by sanding the faces of it. And by sanding the faces, you get... Um, you get the pitch of the neck, you get the, uh, I guess, the, the the yaw of the neck, and also the twist. And then you, you also sink the neck down slowly until it's flush. So the end result, you know, you, you refine it, you sand the faces of it, the neck goes down until it's flush, and the neck angle should be, uh, you know, this angle here, which I've measured using this uh, protractor here, okay? And the angle that I've got is 88 degrees, 88 and a half, I suppose. You know, let's try to, yeah, very close to 88 degrees. All right, so first thing to do Is to mark out the uh, the boundaries so we've got our oh actually the first thing to do would be to get the center line established hang on so get the center line the, the the glue line of the top plates coming up here i'm going to extend that back to the edge right here and then I'm going to draw a line down here. And I'll draw it from both sides, just in case there's a discrepancy in the uh, in the way in the you know, in case the top is off a little bit, and I can see that it's just by a tiny amount there. So see the lines diverge slightly. But this is, so the center line will be in between them down here. So I'm going to draw the center. There we go. Now our template has got little lines on it here. It's, it's acrylic, right? So you can see the lines through the they're just etched into the acrylic. I cut this out, you know, myself a while back. I've used this on a few guitars now. Uh, so you put this cross line here at the edge of the binding, line it up at the center, and mark out around it. Lightly. Got the top 
part of our dovetail marked on, on the top of the guitar here. Right. And we've got the center line going down here. So this dovetail, follow the center line, and the floor of it is going to be right here. Okay. And we'll draw the floor of the dovetail just across here like that. Okay. And also draw the side lines down on either side. So there's the outline of the dovetail. That's the way it's going to be cut into the guitar. Now, um, I might change this a little bit here and just bring it over to the side a little bit because I want to come in the center of this piece that I put in so that when the neck goes in, it covers the lines on both sides. So I might put the center line right there rather than where it is. And uh, let's see if we can draw this again. Okay, so here's what I've ended up with. Um, get over a little closer so you can see it here. Got the outline of the dovetail. So these are basically the saw cut lines. So the idea here, um, I want to have to stay inside these lines. I don't want the the dovetail receiving part too wide because that'll make it loose, right? I want the dovetail to be tight when it goes in. So the idea is to cut it narrower than it needs to be, like inside the lines on the guitar part, and cut it outside the lines on the neck part. So when the neck goes into the dovetail, it stays up a fair amount, and then you refine it by sanding to sink it in. If you cut it too big in the beginning and you cut the neck part too small, it's going to sink right down, and you'll, you'll end up having to shim it, right? Now, you can shim it. That's, that's, uh, that's fine. You know, you can fix it if you make it too big, but I'm trying to get it right uh, the first time. So I've got the center line here, you know, right in center of this patch where, you know, I've had to patch the sides where they were cut too short because I want the um, I want the neck when it goes in to cover these lines, right? And it'll come right down here. It's the neck, the, the heel of the neck is one inch wide. So that should cover both these lines and then the ebony cap will go on and cover part of the binding. And most of the binding actually, I'll, I'll bring the ebony cap right down to the edge if I can do it and uh, cover that little line there where the binding joins, right? So, that's that part of it. Yeah, I just thought of something here. Because the saw is tilted, you're not, you know, and this uh, face here is perpendicular on the on the guide, I had to move the, uh, the stick outside the line a bit. So the end result, because the saw is tilted, it's still going to be inside the line. I don't want it inside too much because I'd want to do more sanding than I have to do. All right, here we go. So, so cuts on the pull action, and I'm lining up the angle of the saw with this line here on the on the front of the guitar. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut into this line first. Stop there, and now I'll come down right inside this line on the face of the front. And I'll stop at the okay. There we go. If you can see that or not, I'll turn this so you can. So I've got a, I've got a cut going just inside the line all the way down, okay, and all the way in. So that's perfect. That's just what I want. Okay, and stops on the line there, stops on the line here, and then I'll do the same on the other side, and then I'll do a couple of other cuts in here, just to, so I can easily chisel this out. Okay. 
see why you want to do this, you know, with a fresh kind of approach, not late at night when you're tired, you know. And same thing on this side, except mirror opposites. Uh, I'm just going to put my finger on the this side of the saw here to keep it pressed against the guide a little bit, okay? So I get a straight cut, and I'll do that cut first. Just inside that line into the, into the back line that I have here. Stop, and then I'll come down inside this line on the front. It's a pull saw, so it's very easy to control. So I've got cut lines coming down just inside the line, both sides. The line is out here, and the line is outside the line here, at the saw cut, and then on this side, the line is over here. You can just see it. I think you can, anyway. Just see the line here, outside the saw. So that's just what I want, because that means that the, uh, the cavity that I'm making is gonna be just a little bit smaller here uh, so that you know the neck will be tight when it goes in and give me room to adjust it right so now just some freehand cuts a couple <laughs> chisel and start working with the chisel all right as much as I like my metal and I'm going to use a lighter hammer for this and make sure your chisel chisels are sharp because otherwise you know if you're using blunt chisels you just butcher it so I've just sharpened these up on a strop cutting into mahogany so actually I think those neck blocks are sapili which is very much like mahogany all right Try my mallet. Just gonna give this chisel a little touch up here. This is not doing what it should be, I don't think.
4,000 stone here. Put the burr off. Really important, these gotta be sharp. Sharp as you can get them. Otherwise, you know, you might just damage it. Okay. Okay, so I learned something about Sapili doing this, and uh, that's that the Sapili is very hard. And I mean, I'm, I understand it's like mahogany, but I think it's a lot harder than mahogany, to be honest with you. And that's why mahogany is used in these neck blocks, because this stuff is a little harder to chisel than mahogany. What we're getting, I just gotta for time. It's coming along pretty good. Just trying to get into the floor of it now. Look how hard that is, eh? Hard as a rock. Mahogany would chip out much easier. So there's a reason these materials are used. Mahogany for this neck block and the tail block. However, tail block doesn't matter as much because you don't have to chisel it. Away like that, break the fibers. It's a very strong structure, though, you know, with all this hardwood glued together. Uh, it's incredible how, how durable it is. You know, you can bang on it like this. You let the chisel follow the the slope of the of the cut, right? And they do. They. they... That's why they're flat on one side, certainly. And you can do just exactly that with them. So I'm just finishing this off. Seems to be pretty good. I went a little wide down here, but I think it's gonna be okay. We'll see. And you know, if it is too big, you can always shim it. Just glue in a piece here, a piece here, but I think we're okay. As long as I cut the one on the neck, nice and big, right? to clean out the corners here because material in the corners like that can hang up the uh, have neck seats right so you want to clear out the corners the same on the neck too yeah. smaller chisel yeah. 
This is a quarter inch. <laughs> Corners all the way down. Oops. Get a sanding stick here that I use to refine it, smoothen it. And that works very well. Get all the crap out of there. All right. So hopefully that'll work. We'll get to work on the neck now. And there's a close-up look at the dovetail and uh, receiving part that we just cut so you know not a bad job got a nice straight face on this side this side here goes down and takes a little turn in there which i don't think is going to matter too much uh that's a peely is really hard it's hard to cut with the chisel but we got it we have the floor level and uh you know, something I didn't show you that I thought I showed you, uh, thought I took a video, but the camera wasn't running, was uh, this guide that I'd used. Hang on. I'd used this guide here to guide the saw cut. So I put it along the edge of the saw cut like that and clamped one end in the sound hole here and the other end outside here. And I did it the same on both sides. And that was just to keep the saw cut true on the line, right? Anyway. There it is. We'll work with it, whatever comes of it, okay?